Yo, what is going on everybody? Happy Saturday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're all are watching from around the world. Uh, I am very excited because today we are once again using Unreal Engine to create a photo reel environment. We're going to do it in one sitting as quick as possible from start to finish, from beginning to end, from scratch to full completion, right? We're doing it together. Uh, I got links in the description if you guys want to download Unreal Engine 5, if you want to join me and do this along with me. It's pretty much all free. Um, so I it took me long enough to learn this program. And it's about time that I, as I'm, as I'm starting to understand it, starting to get it, show you guys everything you need to know in one sitting to do this right. Um, let me show you what we're going to be making. All right, so we are in Unreal Engine. We can fly around and make this scene here. Super fun, All right? It's gonna be awesome. Looks pretty darn photo real. We got some rain coming up in here too. Little drip drops from the sky. Um, and this is actually not as bad as it looks. Um, so I'm ready to hop into this thing. It's gonna be great. But before we do, y'all know how it is. We got a sponsor today. So let's hear from them and we will be back in about a minute and a half and we're gonna get started on this scene. See you guys soon. Sponsored by Manscaped. Now y'all, bring it in. First off, bathe regularly. Second, if you're dealing with this situation up here with the same razor you're dealing with down there, don't. Cut the nonsense. This is the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped, and it's got everything you need to keep things in tip-top shape. The Lawnmower 4.0 is easy to use because it's wireless and waterproof. And these little ball guards it comes with will def <laughs> oh, man. Will definitely come in handy. <laughs> and just like we use aftershave or some sort of beard oil for our face, the Performance Package 4.0 comes with their Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver keep things fresh throughout the day. Also included in the performance package is the Weed Whacker. Cause at a certain point, ear and nose hair is a thing. But you gotta be vigilant. So for a limited time, this performance package ships with two extra gifts, these anti-chafing boxers and this nifty little travel bag. So have some self-respect and use the code Punisher to get 20% off, plus free shipping anything you need at manscaped.com by clicking that link in the description. And don't forget to bathe. That's right, y'all. Bathing is very important. Don't forget to bathe. I know we're all sitting at our desks, getting all oily, collecting dust. It's nasty. Um, but thank you, y'all. Thank you, y'all. Gotta, gotta, gotta make a living, right? Gotta pay them bills. So I appreciate y'all listening. If y'all are interested, you know that link is up in that description. But without further ado, it is time to get this art. Uh, let's see. Let's switch it up. All right, so yes, I already made the art. You're like, what? How did he already make it? Yes, because I need a thumbnail that looks good. Also, I need to make this thing in order to know how to, you know, make it again super efficiently. That's how I waste time is by doing it the first time on the stream. No, I do it first time during the week, son. And then we restart. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna restart this dang thing make a new level and we're starting from scratch like I said. Uh, file, new level. I'm just gonna go basic here, create this thing. And we are gonna build that whole thing from scratch live on the stream. All right, so let's first off save, right? You gotta save. Sewer, stream, bam. All right, so let's talk about the idea first off. Um, because I didn't just pull this out of my head. This is, um, if you guys want to create your own stuff here in the future, you know, you got to use reference. So I use a program called PureRef, and let me load up this goodness here. All right, so this is a real place, all right? I was in Newfoundland, as you all know, uh, maybe at this point, I love Newfoundland. I went there with my buddy Adam, who made the music at the beginning of this stream. 
we went there together to find fog, lots of fog. Um, and we also found a lot of abandoned spots just like this. And I climbed down this dang sewer hole right here and climbed all the way down in here and got this picture. It was awesome. Freaking such a cool spot. You know, a little bit more detail close-ups detail close-ups so I'm using this as reference originally I had a bunch of other references this is all shots that I took throughout my life at abandoned places I love me some abandoned spots this one's from Thomaston Georgia this is the mill it's no longer there this is our boy Brett skate Brett driver um, also taken at this mill um, you know we used to do a lot of short films together military type short films this is a paint factory in Atlanta flooded floor i love the detail and the texture up in here the lighting is incredible and originally i was going to create this scene first but i ended up going with the newfoundland one this is more like hotel stuff uh, in thomaston you know you guys saw this one already this is in canton georgia these are all torn down at this point um this is the prison abandoned uh burnt down prison in atlanta that one's pretty tough to get into <laughs> Same deal, the burnt down prison. Prison. This is in LA. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. I love me some abandoned stuff, um, but I decided to go with this. So this was the, the inspiration, the recreation for our scene today. So that was taking, um, guiding a lot of my decisions. So I'm gonna actually just kind of dock this down here for us so we can constantly kind of check back in and see what's good with it where can we put this guy where should we put this guy i don't know this is fine for now um the first thing i want to do you know i put out that video two weeks ago talking about the, the forest door scene right so the first thing i want to do is block this scene out as quickly as possible so what i did in c4d is i made a Let's see, where are you at? Meshes, sewer, geometry, yes. I made this in C4D, right? Just a little uh, cylinder extruded with the top cut out. There's a little square cut out from the top. Pretty simple, right? And Unreal is just looking good already. This is this is good news. It's dark in here. That's how we want it to look. We got the sun is gonna shine down from here. So yeah, very basic. You all can do this in Blender. You can do this in C4D. This is super super easy stuff. A cylinder with a little roof piece, um, right? That pops right off. So let's go ahead and grab a character just so we can like get a sense of scale here. Also, it's really dark in here, so. I just want to drop a little white solid on here, bounce some light around, just so we can kind of see what's going on. And let's do, hmm. Oh, cryo chamber, oh my God. Oh my goodness, cryo chambers up in here? Yo, wow, that's, that's deep. Y'all don't even realize. Um, so cryo chamber is a label that does a lot of ambient dark ambient stuff and I started listening I think it there's an artist his name is Lustmord. it's a ridiculous name <laughs> I think that's his label I remember as a kid listening to his music as I go to sleep and it's like jail cell doors closing and chains in the night like really stuff you're not really supposed to go to sleep to <laughs> but um, I love ambient music dark ambient music and cryo chamber um, Mount Shrine, who is my favorite ambient artist of all time, it was on their label. Uh, rest in peace, Caesar. Never forget. Um, but that's cool. That's cool that Crowd Chamber's here. That's amazing. All right, so um, let's see. Let's see. Let's grab a person. I went to the Epic Library, the Marketplace. And I just grabbed a, uh, a mannequin from here. Just any free character. That way I can actually see and get a sense of scale. Because that is very important. Where are you? Here we are. Bam. 
We got our m -m 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 meshes, mannequin, character, mesh. Yeah, this is fine. Pretty good, pretty good scale. You know, I built it in C40 uh, to, to actually match the scale here, so. Okay, let's um, let's make a camera, right? So I'm gonna up in the place actors window. Again, if you're not seeing this, you can go to window place actors and let's just grab like a Sydney camera actor, drag it into the scene, right click it, pilot it, and now we're in. I'm holding right click and navigating with W, A, S, and D. Look at my bearings here. Pretty sweet. It's a little too punched in for me, so I'm gonna grab that in the outliner and let's just change the focal length to something like I think I had it at like a 12 or something I had to get the most bang for our buck here that looks pretty good to me yeah that's super solid okay so we got our camera angle right um, let's we can always we'll tweak this stuff later but this is about all we need for now camera wise. Let's go ahead and set up our lighting because that's a big, big part of what we're doing here. You know, we want the lighting to look as good as possible. And then we can start adding all the stuff into our scene with a better idea of how it's all going to look in the end. Um, all right. So we have our directional light. This is our sun. Without this, we don't see anything. Okay. And it's kind of confusing. There's a lot of stuff. There's like, well, there's height fog, and then there's the atmosphere, and then there's the skylight, and then there's the sky sphere, and then there's the volumetric clouds. It's a lot, right? <laughs> it's a lot. And that's why Unreal is so darn confusing for me. Let's start with one at a time, directional light. And this all comes built in when you start your, your blank level, all right? But let's just go ahead and orient this thing. Um, we can see it here. If you hit Control back tick. That's the button next to number one on your keyboard. We can kind of, we can orient this between world and local orientation, but let's go here. Boom, we want it, bam, just like that. Shining straight down into this well or this reservoir. Beautiful. We got that bounce light, Lumen is doing its thing. It's looking really, really nice. Um, dimensions of the cylinder, man, I can't really tell you. Just know that a person is this big. <laughs> That's about it. I'm just going off of eye here. I'm not trying to take measuring tapes out or anything. It's just what looks good, you know? Um, it's about three person, three people tall, I'd say. Yeah. All right. Um, from here. We want to kind of go for that uh, this cone of light that we're seeing here in this reference. So we could do a number of things to get that, right? We have our exponential height fog, which we can scroll down and turn on volumetric fog. And we can take the density up. And you can start to see some light rays coming in here, which is pretty sweet. If we go to our directional light, we can take our volumetric scattering intensity up and it's gonna really spotlight it, which is super cool, but it's actually not what I'm really going for. Um, I want more of an, like an overcast ambient light coming up from the top. So I'm gonna take this back down. Um, we can reset this. You can always add that stuff later, right? What I'm gonna do to punch this up, um, you know, we could take the directional light, we could take the source angle and just take it to like 30. And we're gonna get some weird artifacts here on the side. We'll get into fixing that um, in a second, but that's gonna soften up your sunlight, right? Just a little bit. But what I really wanna do is kinda just do this with a area light. So I'm gonna go up to my lights place actor let's grab a rec light boom space bar to toggle between position rotation and scale I'm gonna make sure that this is checked up here so we snap on the angles 90 degrees we're gonna just come right outside here and BAM something like this is kind of what we're going for right um, let's first make sure 
the rec light, the attenuation radius. Right, that's just, we want to make sure it's kind of maxed out. Not kind of maxed out, we want to make sure it's maxed out. It basically is like, how far does the light travel? And it's going to travel the full, the full distance. Um, and if we move this forward and backwards, we can kind of see what it's doing. Now, a bigger light will have softer shadows. I'm going to move this up. Yep, that looks nice. And I'm going to make it larger. So the rec light, uh, source width and source height. Let's just take that to like 512 by 512, even 1024 by 1024. Cool. And we're going to work all of this stuff in for sure. But like we're starting to get to a point now where like it's looking decent. We'll come back and tweak it, but let's take the intensity up. And we can start filling this scene out with all the good stuff, all the meat that makes up this, uh, this well. And then we'll come back, we'll start solving these issues up here um, with the light leak and stuff. Because that happens with Lumen. Apparently, if your walls aren't thick enough, the light will leak through them. So when I made this cylinder, I made sure to give it thickness, right? But we're still getting a little bit of light leak. So we'll have to figure something out on that end. Um, let's just talk about the last little bits of light here. Um, we took off the sky atmosphere. We can bring that back in. We can really bring all these things back in. The volumetric clouds you probably don't need. I'm just going to delete them because we're inside. Sweet. G will uh, hide, show and hide all of your different icons here. Okay. So, um, let's talk about materials. Let's get some base materials on this guy. The reason I separated the top from the bottom from the actual core of this thing is so I can give them different materials. So I have a material pack called Endless Concrete and it was because I needed really long strips of concrete for my alternate realities render last year. Um, so I made this whole pack of really long bits of concrete. Um, it's on my gum road <clears throat> if y'all want to check it out, but you don't need it. You can, you can definitely go up here. You can go Quixel bridge and you can pull any, this all comes free with unreal engine. It's the coolest thing. Go to surfaces and we can go to concrete and you can start pulling from the, from these different concrete bits, like cast in C2, I guess is how it's pronounced, which technically is like, see, look at that. You can see all the different slabs and everything in the concrete. Lots of detail there. Um, so that would be C2, cast in C2, and you can kind of go through this and pull different ones. I'll show you how you can bring something over. Like, let's say you want this one, right? Bam. Man, this is like super laggy when you're in Unreal. So you click on it. And you can choose highest quality, which is usually 8K, high quality is 4K, medium quality is 2K generally, right? Um, so you'd be fine with, with high or medium quality. You're gonna download it. Once it's downloaded, you'll hit add and it will appear in your in your scene here. Under, where is it? Under mega scans, material or surfaces. Boom, right? So you can just like, drop these different things on but you notice how it changed the light so much right it's much darker now because we're not bouncing this white light all around uh, but that's okay we're gonna get there so i'm gonna use my concrete pack and i'm gonna pull i believe wall one boom yeah that looks freaking great um let's handle this uh, 
auto auto exposure business because you see how it's dark in here and then it's like oh my eyes and then it gets all should be come on now is there is there auto i can't i can't tell if there's auto exposure going on anyway uh what you want to do if you have auto exposure going on so we have our camera right let's go ahead and pop this in a folder and i'm gonna actually let's drag our lighting up in here all this other stuff we can pop into a folder called geo awesome awesome so the cine camera actor if you type brightness in the details panel and you check both min and max Ooh, here we go now here we go now there's our autofocus what we can do is we can choose our own right so if you set them both to the same number there's not going to be any sort of autofocus but i liked it a little brighter like that i think just to see what's going on we can set it to like negative five that's actually pretty intense um negative four this is fine just for us to like see what's going on here um okay so this wall right this material if we double click it, right, we can get all of these different attributes and adjust them, right? So we can adjust the normal intensity, roughness, blah, 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 blah. But what I wanna do is adjust the offset, X and Y offset, to make sure that this is really fitting our scene and going for the best look here. Heck yeah, that is fantastic. Fantastic, sweet. All right, um, the ceiling too, let's do the ceiling. I have some ceiling materials, ceiling one, ceiling two, ceiling three. Let's drop that on there. That looks awesome, this is actually the underside of a bridge. And the floor is actually going to be water. Because if we look at the reference, it's flooded. You can see the reflection on the ground. It's just a bunch of crap on a little bit of water. So, what I'll do is grab a plane or even a wall. Let's see. Let's try plane. We'll drag it out, bring it up just a touch, and let's adjust its scale. 10 by 10 by 10. Let's go 15 just to make sure. Boom. Sweet. And I'm gonna make a material. I'll show you guys how I made this material. It's already been made, but I'll, I'll make it again for y'all. Um, I try to organize all my stuff, right? Materials. We got our materials and we got all of our different stuff in here. You wanna be as organized as possible. It's really gonna help you, you know, stay organized. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Okay, I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a material. Boom. I'm going to call this master material underscore uh, water tutorial. Bam. I'm going to go up in here and I'm cheating it. I'm not doing actual water. I'm just going to make it reflective in Chrome, right? Uh, cheat when you can. So it needs a base color. You can right click it, promote it to parameter. And that's gonna make a, I think it's a three vector. Oh, that's, oh, shoot. Wait, what? I don't know why that's not working. Anyway, I'm gonna right click and promote metallic to a parameter. And I'm gonna do specular. And I believe that is everything we need. We can also do roughness, but probably not gonna need it. By default, roughness is zero. Specular, we're gonna go one. We want it to be shiny. Mm-hmm. Metallic. We want to chrome this thing out. We'll set it to one. And then the base color, I believe, needs to be set to white. And then that should be a chrome ball. Boom. Sweet. So I'm going to save this. Boop, 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 boop. 
From here, I'm gonna right click this master material, create a material instance, and the material instance is what we'll put on the floor. Boom, son. Now we have janky reflections, right? That's because Lumen is probably using screen space reflection, but it's okay because we're gonna be viewing our stuff from here. We're gonna be viewing our stuff from here. We might be viewing our stuff from here like you saw in the tutorial or at the beginning of this thing, but this, some of this stuff will be covered up. We can also, I'm wondering if we can, why is it not bouncing the ceiling? I wonder. Let's make a post process volume, drag it into our scene, hit G. It's gonna show and hide all of our stuff. And for this post process, process volume to take effect, it's only going to take effect inside this box. And think of the post process volume as uh, ways to crank render settings, ways to add color correction, ways to add lens effects, etc. All that's just going to happen in that box unless we set it to unbound. Bam. Now it's happening everywhere. Um, so I wonder if it's like a... It's definitely... Here's, here, here's where I've run into a problem, okay? If I type reflection, all right, we have our reflections, we have our lumen reflections, our screen space reflections, et cetera, et cetera, ray trace reflections. We are using lumen for our reflections. If I switch to to uh, to ray traced, we're getting crisper reflections, but it's doing a weird thing where it's like making it way brighter on the ground than it needs to be. I don't know why. It might have something to do with the global illumination, I, I don't know. I do not have the answer for this. Maybe this is a William Fauché situation here. Um, William, where are you at? <laughs> um, but I'm just doing Lumen because it just looks so darn good. We are getting a little some blurry reflections, but whatever. Once we add all of our stuff into the scene, it's going to look freaking awesome and it's not even going to be a worry. Um, but I wonder if I can like, I think it's... So this is screen space reflection, and that's no good. Lumen is fine. We can go to lumen reflection quality and ray lighting mode, so we can maybe change it from hit lighting for reflections. I think hit lighting for reflections is, oh weird, it's taking out, if I take the quality of this up to four, it's not really doing anything. This looks the best to me. I know there's a setting I should be using, but I'm good for now, right? Um, we can't get hung up on the details. We need to keep moving forward. So I'm gonna move post-process volume into the camera folder. I'll move this plane into the geo folder. And we are all organized. Our lighting is generally set up. We have some textures popping off here. Um, I think it's time to start building out these columns and painting all of this grungy nastiness on the floor and then we'll get into the graffiti adding all that good stuff um, tweaking 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 so let's go ahead and add those columns because they are the next biggest piece of this whole thing so uh once again what i did i went to the top left here and i went to quixel bridge and what i do when i start a new project is Usually I do this in the standalone bridge because Quixel bridge version is a little laggy. I'll go and essentially look for 3D assets or uh, or materials, anything that is going to fit my scene. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to give it a little heart right here. I'm going to favorite the, the asset so that I build up all of these favorites here and I can just batch download them and batch add them to the scene, right? So what I did is I pulled some of these concrete columns, right? I'll click on them. Let's find one that's already downloaded. This one, I already downloaded it. And you wanna do the Nanite mesh. Um, it's just gonna help with performance. You're gonna be able to glide through your scene easily, quickly without bogging down your frame rate. So just make sure you choose Nanite and add it to your scene, right? But I already I already did all this stuff, okay? So it's gonna show up in your Megascans folder and your 3D assets. And we should have cement. Oh, here's another thing I do, by the way, guys. 
I'm going to save this and I'm going to go into the assets. I made a new level um, of all the assets that I would use in this scene. So I literally just went file, new level, blank, or basic right here. And I just drag these different assets, right, from the content browser into a level where I can actually see everything that's going on. That way I'm able to choose, oh, I know I want this one, I want that one, I want that one. It just helps give me a good overview of what I'm working with, right? This was for another idea. Um, but this guy, this is this is what we're using. So let me go back to the sewer stream. Bam. And we should, uh, it's all dark now because we're not piloting this camera. For some reason, if you right click and you can't pilot your camera, you're going to have to just kind of navigate, see your camera here right click the physical camera and pilot it that way um so let's pull that concrete pillar boom right here yep yep and i'm gonna hold alt and just duplicate it on top of itself as opposed to stretching it out And we can select all these by holding shift control G will group them. And then we can hold alt and move them over as well. And of course we will rotate it. So it doesn't look exactly the same. I'm holding spacebar to cycle between my gizmos. Boom. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. Bam. All right. All right. All right. So we're getting there, right? We're getting there. It's looking pretty sweet. So from here, let's, let's go ahead and add that ladder. So, uh, in the reference, right? There's a ladder. It's kind of like the whole thing. It's the light with the ladder. And that would probably be the next most defining part of this scene here. So in C4D, y'all can use Blender, whatever you want. Um, I modeled a little ladder here. Let's pull that up. Mesh ladder. Ladder, boom. Bing bong bing. I'm gonna hit F. It's gonna snap me to the thing I have selected. Let's pull it out. Switch it on around. 180, bam. If you uh, aren't snapping, if your angles aren't snapping, that's going to be this little toggle right here. You have uh, position snap, rotation snap, scale snap. Again, hitting spacebar to cycle between all my gizmos. And I'm just going to get it into the wall here and move it up appropriately. Boom. And I think I'm going to scale this ladder up a bit. Um, cause I really, I, I want you to be able to see the ladder, right? Let's just make it two times bigger. Yeah, that feels pretty kind of big, uh, 1.75. Cool. Not really worried about the, yeah, that's, that's. That's mighty fine. And let's get a material on it. Again, this is just a, a bridge material for, that y'all can get for free. So let's find it. Mega scans, where you at? Surface. Boom. Tar stained concrete. No, shuttered concrete. Rusty metal sheet. That's what I'm talking about. Bam. We got our rusty metal sheet material right on here. Not too shabby. It's going to be so far away, like, you're not even going to be able to tell, but it's better than just base gray. Ooh, we got a little problem. Control G will hopefully ungroup, but it's not for some reason, so right click, 
Oh, it's shift G. That's that's why. Bring that down. Shift G. Um, I'm hitting right click and hitting E to boom up to move the camera up. Boom, and then I'm just gonna group these again. Control G. We'll group, shift G, we'll ungroup. Good to know. All right, so we have our ladder, we have our water, we have our columns, we have our material, we have our lighting. Like so much of this is, we're, we're, we're getting close. We're getting very, very close. Um, no, I'm just saying things, this, this isn't that close, but it's pretty darn close. We, we got the vibe, we just need to spice it up. So, um, here's another thing I'll do, because it's getting us closer to the vibe as quickly as possible, is the color correction, right? You can see here that I colored this a bit more green, cyan, um, definitely a green cast to it. So, I'm going to use the post-process volume to do that, alright? Um, so if I scroll down here, let's see, color correction, color grading, that's what we want. We want global, okay? So we can take the gamma, I'll check that, and just kind of pull this towards the green hue here. Just a little something, very matrixy. Big fan. Like, just even a little bit of that, it, it takes us uh, a little bit closer to the vibe, and we could you know, if you want, you could go to town here. Well, you know, why not? Why not? So let's try the shadows. The gamma of the shadows will pull towards like a, a purple or something. We can do mid tones to that green. I like to go overboard and then walk it back. And the highlights we can push towards uh, like a bluish green or something. And we can go global gamma as well. You know, you can do a lot of stuff. You can go to town here, but I'm not I'm not spending too much time on the color correction, but just a little something to get the vibes right. And while we're at it in the post-process volume, vignette is a big move here. We can check that on and just work in a little bit to help our vibes get a little closer to what we're going for. All right. Now we can start adding and painting on this rubble. I'm not hand placing that, that's gonna be a mess. But before we do that, let's go ahead and um, place the bigger chunks, okay? So once again, well first off, how's everybody doing? How's everyone doing? Let's, let's take a moment just to see, let's check in with everybody. Ah, what's going on everyone? Ah, of course we got Soto in the house, always in my ear telling me what's good with it. Um, he's behind the scenes making sure that the stream runs smooth. I saw Visual, another one of the moderators popping in here. Good to see ya. Melvin, how's it going? Tesla Rock, yo yo. Heck yeah. Everyone doing all right? If you guys are following along, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. You can always pause this thing later. Papaxo, what is going on? Styles Morales, what's up dude? Um, Henry, absolutely, man. Yeah, it was fun judging the, the Rococo Loop Challenge. Such, such awesome renders. What else do we got? Who's up? Who, who's up in here? Heck yeah. That's good to, good to see you guys. We got some thumbs ups here. People hanging out, working along with me. Zach B, you're learning Maya. Good luck to you. Very cool. Churlish VR, hello from Australia. That's what's up. Azaz, we, we're going to get you something good before you go to bed here. 
nice jamerson doing 3d art and blender so it really guys it really doesn't matter like what program you're using you've you've heard me say this a million times it doesn't matter what program you're using as long as you're creating cool stuff um i mean but hey if you don't want to create cool stuff that's cool too <laughs> But if you all are trying to be creative and are trying to create some cool stuff, then it doesn't matter what program you're using. I'm using Unreal because that's my personal journey. You guys use whatever you want. Um, and these live streams, they're not here to force anyone to do a certain thing uh, or to use a certain tool or whatever. It's just, it's creative time. So while I'm working, you guys could be working on your stuff too. We're working together. Could be on the same thing, could be on separate stuff. We're just hanging out and working together. So yeah, good times very good times oh man cambodia we got india that's awesome thailand that's what's up germany ukraine wow man we got a awesome kenya ghana dang man you guys are all over the place that's great or india spain yes yes Oh, I love it. We've got the international worldwide audience. We got UK. Man, y'all are awesome. All right, let's get back into it. We got some people who are trying to get to bed. You know, it's late. Okay. Sweden, Nigeria, Nepal, Finland, Taiwan. Heck yeah. <laughs> France, Saudi Arabia. That's what's up. Canada shout outs. All right. We got one person from LA. That's great. <laughs> I too am in LA. All right. Let's, um, let's add the bigger chunks. Okay. So we have mega scans, 3d assets. Y'all know you see me do it. Top left quixel bridge. This all comes free with unreal engine. You're going to go to 3d assets. You're going to search for the assets you want. Um, if you just look up under assets, 3d assets, concrete or rubble or whatever, they, they got stuff for days up in here. So you just browse the site, find the stuff that works for you. And, uh, we're going to do it nice. All right. So asphalt debris. Okay. That's smaller stuff, smaller stuff. All right. We got some, some stuff here. I'm just going to lay out the bigger items. We got some rubble. This is pretty small still, but we can scale it. Um, more rubble pile. Okay, this is where we start getting good here. Start getting good here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Nice little like patch of dirt there. We got some stairs. Probably not gonna use those. Branches, we're gonna come to those branches later. We gotta work big and go small. Um, containers, metal containers, pipes, pill a pillow, some boards, all this stuff is based off of me looking at the reference and seeing what's scattered around, but we're going to get there. Um, concrete pillar and a trash bag. Okay. So we got our, our main big pieces here. Okay. So we want to scatter these around as I like, say, like little islands around this little well here or reserve water reserve it's not a sewer technically it's not a sewer so stuff has fallen down this is crazy like look at this pipe and we have a powerade we got water bottles we got snacks we got sticks little ferns and cans and just a bunch of stuff little rocks all these are things that have fallen down here over the years and they've kind of piled up by the by the, the bottom of this ladder by the base of this ladder and it just gets a little thinner as you come out towards uh, the back of this thing so you know we see our sticks bunch of branches rocks boards all that good stuff um, and again that's what why I'm pulling these specific items from Quixel. Um, so yeah, let's make let's make some little islands where all this stuff can kind of be populated onto. All right, and you can see my texture went out because who knows why. It doesn't really matter at this point. 
it'll come back later if we give it a restart or something. But let's place all this stuff, right? I'm going to scale this up a bit. Maybe scrunch it down and kind of just cover up the corners. We'll get it below the surface of the water. Mm hmm. We can get this mound. Uh, scroll wheel will control camera speed, guys. It's also on the top right up there. Let's maybe get like a little area in here. We can scale it down. I'm hitting spacebar to cycle between the gizmos. Drop it below the floor, of course. And let's switch these because this one is a little bigger. Cool. And holding Alt, we can duplicate. And I'll build up some little islands at the base of these pillars here. Let's scrunch it down, pull it up. See, that's looking pretty sweet. That's looking pretty sweet. Same deal here, hold Alt. Spacebar to toggle between the gizmos, flatten it down, and give these pillars a little something to stand on. We can orbit this, and we can also turn up the brightness. So let's go to our post-process volume, or no, was it in the camera? We type brightness, and let's just go up a stop on both of these, just so we can kind of see what we're doing. Very nice. These guys can scale up. I'm gonna use this as like little chunks in the water. Kind of going for chunkage, you know, general chunkage in the water. That's, that's exactly what I'm going for. So I'm gonna scale this down, just flatten it like that, and then drop it. And you can see we got some general chunkage in the water and you can scatter that around, or rather duplicate. I'm gonna scale this up too. Boom, boom, boom. Drop it. Chunks. I am immediate chunks. All right, what else? Um, ooh, loving them chunks. That's looking good. And we have a little dirt patch here. We can probably get this dirt patch. We can scale this thing up. Put this up in the corners and stuff. Um. Yep. 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 Rotate. And flatten. Don't want it all looking the same here. Um, chunks. So we'll go from the main islands. We'll kind of like. We'll get smaller and smaller. The islands are the biggest. And then we'll go small, small, small off into the water, right? So let's duplicate this. Orbit. Drop a little lower. Bam. Sky orbit. And we can even raise it up and drop it down. And constantly be looking at like your camera angle view, okay? You always wanna be looking where you're gonna be shooting from. So that for me, that's gonna be here. It, it could be all over. Um, it's also up here based off of the thumbnail and the art. And it could also be like off to the side, low off to the side. Um, holding Alt, still I'm duplicating orbit so it doesn't look like a duplicate we can even like stretch it a little bit and just try to fill in the edges here boom stretch raise it up maybe it's a little too stretched Bam. 
pretty nice. Let's get what we got this guy. We haven't used this one yet. But it's just, you know, back and forth. Working everything in. Bada boom, bada beam. I was definitely inspired by some Bob Ross, you know. Um, I was watching a little YouTube video on him, and they were talking about how he he creates a piece of art. He creates three pieces of art. One before the show. So he kind of gets an idea of what he's going to be doing on the show. So it's not his first time on the show. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I created this previously. Um... As you can see right here, we built this out. Um, this this was just yesterday, only yesterday I did this, which is crazy to think about. Before I couldn't imagine doing this in one day, um, and now I'm about to do it in <laughs> in three hours. So it's pretty nuts. But um, yeah, this was my round one. The stream will be round two, and I'm not going pro Bob Ross doing a third one after the fact like maybe i'll touch up this original one right here maybe um but i think it just makes for better streams it gets us to the point faster um i'm a bit more educated on what i'm teaching or rather doing i feel i don't feel like i'm really teaching i feel like i'm just kind of talking out what i'm doing um whether it's right or wrong who knows But we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. It's gonna look good. I promise. So let's grab. We're you know we're we're making our way downtown. We're walking real fast. Um, walking super fast. All right. Let's just get. Let's just go on and get this scaled on. <gasps> oh, scaled on up. Get. My boy. There we go. Chunks. Bam. Loving them chunks. Okay. Let's keep placing things. Um boom. We can scale this way down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wonderful. And we got some chunks back here. They're looking nice. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. And we can pull some of this. And we're, we're we're pretty much there. We don't need to fill in all the detail with these main island bits. Um but it's it's gonna help us certainly um uh, place all of these pieces of trash and boards and sticks and cans and all that good stuff it's gonna help us do all that stuff so chunks amazing scale this boy up boom d von williams in the chat my goodness, with the super chat too. My son, you know what you just did? You just you just purchased me a kombucha. Thank you, Devon. Thank you for that boot, son. It is a brand new day. It's a brand new stream, son. <laughs> yes. Ah, Devon Williams. Man, you ever get charged for that? For those tuxedo pants you ripped? I don't think I got charged for my shirt. I don't think Marcus got charged for his pants either. It was a good wedding, y'all. It was a good wedding. Um. 
Good to see you here, Devon. I miss you, man. I'm just sitting here all alone. I'm not even sitting down. I'm standing up. Doing 3D art. Oh, that's cool. We got you. Y'all y'all here in spirit. Y'all here on the internet waves. I ain't alone. Okay. I think we have enough to start building out uh, all the scatter. So I am going to restart Unreal to get that texture back. But I, you know what? I wonder if this works. Hold on. Let me try loading another level and hopping back in and see if that works. Oh, is it worse? How's it worse? Oh, just because I'm not. Okay, let me restart this real quick. This is the one that I made yesterday. Let's open up that stream. Here we go. Now it's loaded. Right click that dang thing. Pilot this dang camera and we are back. Sweet. All right. Um, hmm. Let's start painting. So y'all know that Quixel Bridge is a thing. I think we have established that many times on this live stream. Uh, went to 3D assets. I looked up trash, rubble, dirt, rocks, dust, whatever the heck. All 3D assets that came from my reference. I looked at the reference. What's in my reference? Logs, rocks, paint cans, uh, bottles, sticks, uh, more rocks, more sticks. Let's get a little closer. What do we see? Tiny sticks, tiny rocks, uh, pipes, metal stuff, infrastructure, cans. Man, this is a just a trash heap. Just a trash heap. So, um, let us go back to Unreal. Knowing what we need to pull from Quixel Bridge, you know, it's based off your reference. I can't say say it enough reference is very very important um let me restart this dang camera too um come on now let's go boy <sighs> camera's back all right camera's back it could happen again you know technical difficulties they, they're out there. They're coming for you. Okay. So what I did is I went through bridge. I favorited all my favorite stuff. And we have these 3D objects here in our scene under the 3D assets mega scans folder. Now, we're going to paint this stuff onto our scene. And the way I'm going to do that is by going top left, select mode, and we're going to go to foliage. All right. And we're gonna drag and drop all the different bits of foliage. Um, and in this case, it's not just foliage, it's rocks, dirt, dust, bottles, cans, sticks, rocks. You can paint anything. I could have painted these large chunks of landscape. Um, so let's go through one by one, add them, paint them, and see what it looks like, okay? We'll start with these little chunkers, these little rocky guys. I'm gonna drag them in, this foliage, and by default, they're all checked, right? So that means when I start painting, they're gonna be scattered around the scene. You can hold shift, click, and that's going to erase these little guys, yeah? But let's set them up 
so that we don't just start painting by default and we, we want to give this a little bit of art direction and and some uh, some style make sure things are looking as good as possible so let us do some testing right so I'm gonna paint it on this rock and we can see that they're kind of scattered around like little Oreo bits all right we can control if I select them all on the left side we can control the density so if I crank the density to a thousand you know it nothing changes weird okay Wait, did I not change it? There we go. They're just a little denser now. Um, we could also adjust the scale, right? So we can say they're anywhere between their default size and two times bigger, right? Or their default size and five times bigger. So you can scatter these around. The density is really intense. Oreo town, all right? Um, but we don't want that. I think a density, a size of, of one and one is fine. And a density of 100 is probably great. Um, maybe even 80. The other thing we can do is rotation. We can take the random pitch angle to 360. That's where it maxes out, 359 technically. And it's just gonna randomly rotate these pieces. And I think that's kind of cool, but is it cool if it, they're also flat? Like you just don't want them to look uniform, too uniform. And I think this actually is not bad. Maybe I can take that to like 25. So there's a little bit of rotation in these things. So I think those are set up. We're good. Let's keep going down the, down the list. Cinder blocks, let's drag our cinder blocks in. And let's deselect. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna take off this content browser so we can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on with this paint situation. Um, and I'm just gonna move the content browser over. Come on now. Over to my other window. And you'll just trust that I'm pulling from that content browser, right? Also, freaking Pequod. Goodness gracious. Thank you very much for that. That is a very generous super chat from you, good sir. Pequod, I love that name. Peck, Peckid, Peckwood. I, I don't know. Uh, you say, good morning. Do you recommend operating with UE5 as an alternative for other paid rendering solutions, Octane for C4D, as it offers a whole lot asset wise um i freaking love unreal there's no reason not to get into unreal because it's very powerful it's free i freaking love it it is the best um now c4d and octane that has a different place uh in my heart and it always will it's better for if you're really going for like final render final production quality um, and you want things to look good right out the gates, um, you know, uh, a non-biased renderer is probably what you want. It doesn't have to be C4D Octane. That is what I use. I do love it very much. That is a great combo. Um, but of course, Blender is a thing too. You got Maya. Um, those are those are kind of the main ones right now. 3ds Max is still around. It's just not as updated. But I'd say, man, like, I, I was trying to fill the hole. I was trying to fill like, what's the difference? Um, let me try and restart this dang camera again. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I was trying to figure out like, why do I need Unreal Engine? And this is exactly why, to make these environments in real time. I was inspired by Memories of Australia, super awesome short film. I was inspired by Quixel Rebirth, really awesome short film. There's a whole lot of good stuff coming out of Unreal Engine environment wise, and I think it's perfect for that. I love environments, I love traveling. So it's a great way for me to create literally the places I've traveled to. Like I have been in this sewer. That is the coolest thing ever. Um, and I'm creating this based off of reference photography I took in this sewer or a well, I guess, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so it's a really fun, fast and easy way to create. You know, if we can take what's in our heads and put it off into 
the screen, if we can create something from our heads to a canvas as quickly as possible, that's the goal, right? So Unreal helps me do that immediately by just immediately seeing what it's gonna look like. So I love it. And thanks again for that super chat, very generous of you. Back to it, I'm gonna select the asphalt, I'm gonna deselect all those, right? Shift click, deselect them. So we're just messing with our new asset. These are cinder blocks. And by default, they are too small and they're too uniform. So I am gonna make some adjustments. I think there's too many of them. So let's take the density down to like 50. They're too small. So let's take it up from, uh, let's take it to two. We're gonna double them in size. And they also, I think are still, there's too many of them. So let's take uh, this to like 15, density to 15. That feels a bit better to me. I'll even go nine or something. Um, Cause I don't want a ton of these assets everywhere, right? That's even, that's still a lot. The last thing is rotation. You, they're all standing up and we don't really want that. We want them to be in different orientations. So I'll scroll down just a touch and take that random pitch angle to let's, let's see what 360 looks like. And I think that's a lot better. Um, we could try like just 90 degrees and see it's not bad. It's better than what it was before. I'll take it to like 120 or something. Um, and then I'm actually gonna move it down so the max height is, oh wait, no, that's like, I, yeah, cause I, I want them to be like in the water. I think they're fine, it'll be fine when we paint other stuff. But that looks good to me, right? Now let's move on and set up our, our second asset, so or our third rather. Deselect those. Let's bring in, what's next on the list? I'm just looking in the content browser on my other screen. Rubble pack. We have a rubble pack. I'm gonna grab all of these and drop them in, okay? Right, they're all selected by default. We'll scatter them around. That's looking pretty sweet. There's just a lot of them. I don't want it to be too many of one specific thing. Um, so I'm gonna take this density also down to probably 10 as well. And I like the way this stuff looks. I think it, these they look cooler, flatter, because they catch the light a little bit more. Um, I'll give them a little bit of random rotation, so maybe like 15 degrees, but they're not looking uniform by default, which is great. I think we're solid there. We can even take the density down to like six. We don't want too many big things kind of hogging this this whole random assortment of stuff. We're gonna paint all this together at one time. We're gonna to toggle everything together, but we gotta keep going through and setting our stuff up one by one here. We're about halfway down the list. Here's another one. This is another rubble pack. I think these are a bit smaller. Let's paint these and see what they look like. Nice. Let's take the density down to like 20. Yeah, and then we can, I mean, honestly, I think that looks great. Moving on. <laughs> um, dead branches, yes. Let's grab our branches, bring them in. Now there's a lot of branches, so I might leave these guys. Oh, that's a lot though. Okay, let's take the max size to two, the minimum to 0.5, okay. Density wise, I think we can probably take it to like 60, just so they're not consuming everything, but I think that looks pretty awesome. Deselect those, we'll count those as good to go. Um, we have branches as well. We have more branches. Let's see. What do these branches offer? These are like 
just more branches. I don't know if we need them. We can make them like little tiny guys, maybe. Um, 0.25 to 0.5 with a density of like 50. So like little sticks, little sticks. I'm down for that. Okay. Um, we have metal containers. Let's see what metal containers look like. We got some boxes. I'm actually going to take these boxes out. It's just too boxy. Be gone. And we have some cans. Obviously, this is way too uniform and too many. So I'm going to set this density to like 10. And I'm also going to set the minimum scale to 0.5 as well as the rotation to 360. That feels a lot better to me. I'm down with that. Sweet. Moving on. We got pipes. Um, let's grab some pipe pieces. I'll just want to grab these two right here and right here. Let's paint these and see what they look like. All right. There's a ton of them. How many pipes fell down? Okay. Not <laughs> that many. Let's take this to 10 as well. Rotation angle. We can also do 360 and I think I'm cool with the size. Oh, but they're like see-through and stuff. So I am going to delete those. No good. Oh, we still have our branches in here. Let's get rid of these branches. I'm going to select all the branches. They are already selected. That is great. And I'm going to hold shift and erase. Because we don't need them yet. That's fine. There's a couple in there, but whatever. Um, old containers. Yes. All right. So we got a bunch of like laundry detergent containers and stuff. Let's scatter those. Obviously way too much. <laughs> Let's take the density back down to 10. So they're in here, but they're not like, I'll even take it to eight. Size is fine. 360 on the angle. So that looks good to me. I'll even take that density to like six. And we're almost done. We have our wooden boards, the wooden boards. Yes, these are important. Very important. Boom. It's all it always starts off as too many. All right. I'll set it to 15. Dude, I'm painting these dang sticks too. Get, you see how it's all, it's all painting together. Whatever's checked is being painted. Okay. We're going to turn all these on once we're, once we're done, we're almost done. These boards are looking nice. Let's set the rotation angle to like 30 degrees. They kind of look like bricks, but that's okay. I'm going to set it to 10 and then we have some bigger boards. To close it out with. Wait a second, I'm so confused. These are the big boards. There we go. These guys are awesome. So I'm going to take those. I'm going to max them out at like 1.5 minimum 0.5 density 15. Rotation angle 30 and let's kind of just See what that looks like. I think that's freaking sweet That looks great. So now when we take all of this we turn all of it on Now we're painting with trash Yeah And we're gonna go to town here Brush size Pff, let's go 50 son That is a lot of 
cinder blocks. So maybe I will dial back on the cinder block density. Boom, boom. Take it to like six or something. We got a super chat. Who is Al Alec? Alec Tucker. Goodness gracious. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the content. You work at Epic and use UE every day. Yet still learn so much from the content. Reach out if you ever need help. Dude, that is awesome, man. Heck yeah. That is what's up. Man. Yeah, this program is freaking sweet. It's so much fun every single day. Well, I'm glad you learned it. I appreciate the super chat. Uh, thanks for showing some love. I'm excited to paint some trash. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> so camera angles, we're talking like here. And there goes my texture again. It's cool. We'll come back. We're talking here. So we do need to fill this out. I'm thinking we got some pileage up on here. It's fallen down like all up on here, you know? Out into here. All up on this, all up on that. Those dang cinder blocks. Those dang cinder blocks. I'm gonna get these things. Ooh, I'm gonna get these things. Uh, Let's scale them down. And let's rotate them even more. And let's take their density to like three. And I'm gonna erase some of them. The reason um, my pointer and this little cursor aren't lined up is because I'm in a camera that has a specific aspect ratio. So it, it, it's a little like, a little disjointed. Sweet, all right, back to it. I'm gonna go too thick back here. Um, we can take the density, if we go zero, let's see, does that? Yeah, it does, cool. We can take the density down to like half and take our brush size up and just kind of do a light, a light glazing of sewage. Great. This looks awesome. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Dang! We got two powerful super chats up in here. Um, Alpha Toad. Um, amazing, man. Thank you so much. You are one of my favorite creators on YouTube. That is some very generous words i appreciate that from the mind-boggling montages of the highest quality community driven projects of all time to the best unreal tutorials out there you are constantly inspiring you inspiring me love you my man thank you alpha that is awesome thank you for the praise thank you for the kind words i do what i can i i always got to do my best that's the thing is like i can't i can't do a halfway job and you know since doing uh since doing that unreal stream a month ago and realizing like how great it was and how awesome and how much fun it was and it's like I, I i gotta put more into these streams so doing the art beforehand and getting to the point where i can quickly work on this stuff live here with you guys that's the way to go um so thank you alpha and dylan thank you very very much i uh, love your content got me inspired to start blender and now i'm doing creative media course yes that's what's up heck yeah man keep it up keep it up keep that fire going it's very important Thanks for stopping by and thank you for saying hey. Um, and S, uh, man, I'm gonna butcher this. I'm so sorry. S Bjorn Montelius Risberg. 
That's a pretty sweet name. Thank you for that super chat. No, no message necessary. Just a straight up little support from a Lego man. Thank you, Lego person. Um. Cool, cool, cool. Now this is looking awesome. Um, minus our texture going out, which it's gonna happen. We just gotta do a little restart. It don't come back. Um. Yes. 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 Okay. This is pretty darn close. Here's the thing, guys. Here's here's the thing I'm doing that you didn't see me do because I didn't do it yet. Um, and that is to make these assets that we just painted and these little like uh, these little islands of rubble that we laid out is to make them feel and appear wet. Okay. And the way I'm doing that is by finding whatever the asset is. Let's say it's this one. I'm gonna hit control B for browse and that's gonna open up your content browser. I got it on the other, let me let me actually just, let me just dock it again. What? Who? G get. <sighs> oh. Dang camera. Hmm. I don't know what it is, y'all. I don't know why it keeps overheating or something. It's a thing. Anyway, as long as you can hear me and see the video and see the stream, we're doing good stuff. Okay. So, what is next? I was talking about wetness of this thing. Okay, are right, you gonna hit Control B? You're gonna browse to the asset. Boom, right? You're gonna double click the material instance and this is where you can adjust its parameters like uh, how shiny it is. Is it is it not shiny at all or is it full shiny? Um, I had it set to 0.8. The roughness, that's how matte it uh, the reflection appears. Is it like a mirror or is it leather? You know, leather still is reflective. It's just not shiny, super you know crispy reflection like a mirror would be so one is full roughness zero is crispy like a mirror i think i had that set to 0.8 um so what i do usually with these mega scans materials the default is like this the base specular is 0.5 the roughness is one but if you want it to appear more shiny and catch the light which i really want to i want it to feel wet um we're gonna go full shininess full reflectivity right so we're gonna take their specular to one and the roughness the closer you remember the closer you get to zero the more crispy it, it feels right the more like soaked and wet it feels and i think i had this set to 0.8 so it's a nice nice little uh subtle gloss on this guy you know without it you wouldn't be getting this 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 bounce light same for all this stuff you know you wouldn't be getting like this rock right here, you see this rock? From this angle, it's not really reflective, but as we go towards the light, you can see it's really catching this light off the side of that asset. So that's what you want. Dang, is the webcam gone again? Shoot. That's not good. I'm just gonna let it cool off. Maybe it's uh, heated up a little much, but we'll get there. So next, what I'm gonna do, we're probably at the point now, I can, I can, I think I can like grab some of these and duplicate them over and, and they actually come with the rubble that was painted onto them. So that's pretty sweet. All right, so you can fill things in that way if you like, if you wanna get a little bit more uh, chunkage going, right? So I can take this whole thing, move it over, alt drag, kind of bring it right back in on here. Very, very nice. So now I think think we can talk about let's try and get the lighting closer to a final image okay 
So I'm gonna get rid of this dude right now. And I believe I'm gonna need to do a quick restart. That way I can get my textures back. So bear with me while I do that. L, tell me what what is the fix? Ah, okay. L dot type R dot streaming dot pool size three thousand. Keeps your textures going from low res all the time. Default is a thousand, and it's not hard to go over the limit. Okay, that is great news. That is great news. All right. Let's hop into this guy and let's follow L's advice. L from uh, Death Note L? It might be. Could it be? R dot streaming dot pool size 3000. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is some golden advice. Heck yeah. All right. Brand Doom. Technically, this is the native flute I was playing just then. The Native American flute. The Ghost of Tsushima flute. That is called a Shakuhachi. And apparently, that's really hard to play. It's hard to even get a sound out of. The native flute is cool because if you can blow into a a bottle and make a sound, you know, it's technically harder to do that than it is to play the native flute. So, all right, let's see if we can't get our lighting looking better. All right. If I were to take off, um, let me reset this real quick. Yes, that is what we want. Pilot the camera, okay. off our directional light and see what happens all right so we're definitely getting a lot of lift in our scene from the directional light but we're getting this spill over the top and the edge of this thing and i think it's because god it's so bright i think it's because it's coming right to the edge it needs to technically like be a little bit larger than it and a little bit lower so let's see if that helps us i'm gonna bring it down a touch And I'm going to scale it up. Yeah, yeah. What? Is that scaling up? I can't tell. That's... Okay. And then I'm just going to cap it. Bring it on down. Alright, it's still not doing it. Let's, um... Let's mess with our rectangle light. Because that's, you know, that's technically what's doing it. Wow, that looks... That looks cool. Where the heck is this light coming from? Oh my god. Oh, okay, so it's still shining through that.
sweet. All right, let's try. Let's grab our sun. And we want to point our sun just a little bit further in. Let's take that rec light and maybe just scale it down. Yo, that like solved everything. I just scaled it down. I also wonder if like placing walls on the outside of this thing could help with this. Let me just try it. Um, let me take, yeah. So under lit, I just unchecked the game settings and we can adjust our exposure that way. Let's try doing, uh, well, I guess first we can make sure that's correct. All right, under, when you started your project, you can start it with um, starter content. That way you can like tap into all their different, you know, materials and, and assets. And there's some walls here that we can pull out. Boom, right, we'll scale that up. We got a super chat. You're an environment artist with 1.5 years of work experience recently completed a contract but now need to find a new job and getting a lot of rejection even with one plus year of work experience i guess i need to make more projects and update my portfolio please keep teaching us don't stop um shoot yeah well thank you for the super chat that's very kind of you um that's a tough one that is certainly a tough one and you know with job stuff like I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't like bid for a freelance job or or attempted to get a um you know like a studio job in a very long time. Maybe even I don't even know if I've if I've had to do had to do that. So, you know, definitely take whatever I'm about to say uh with a grain of salt. I don't understand that <laughs> that saying, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, there's, there's outside factors that you cannot control when it comes to job stuff. I mean, when it comes to life, obviously, um, you can only do your best and then it comes down to like, you know, do they know someone, uh, and they are, are they hiring based off of them knowing someone for, for a long time because they're a friend or you know, or maybe the company doesn't need X, Y, and Z. They need some other thing. They need A, B, and C. So it's it's really tough. Um, job hunting is very, very tough. I've had friends go through it. Um, close relatives, loved ones. And like, it, it's, it's a tough situation because you're constantly being rejected and that doesn't feel good. Um, you're like, well, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And you may not be doing anything wrong. One thing you can be doing though, is talking with other professionals in your field that you want to, um, you know, you see yourself doing their job. They've done the job that you want. So you talk to them about like, what are some things or some pointers and tips? So that's a great way to stay connected, to make connections and to also get advice on what you can specifically be doing to update your resume. You know, so or find what, what what's a average price, what's a fair price, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this is just network and get to know people. So that's about all I can offer advice-wise on that. I'd say just you know keep it up, keep having fun, and at the end of the day, just keep that spark going. You know, try not to lose that passion. And if you do, it's okay. Take a break. Go on a vacation if you can. Um, it'll come back to you for sure. All right. I'm dropping a fully black solid onto these guys. Um, I'm also going to do a little ceiling cover. So it's like no light is getting in. You know what I mean? Except for where it really needs 
to get in. That's the idea with what I'm doing right now. And we'll, we'll see if it makes a difference. It may not. And we might just have to keep tweaking our lights. That made a massive difference. Oh, but it's because we need to change our exposure. Yo, that fixed it. That fixed it. Sweet. Okay, let's shape our light a little bit more. I don't like that it's just a square down here. I want it to be a little bit more soft. So let's see what we can do um, based off of our reference, right? Always going back to our reference. There is not a square of light. It is a very soft fall off. So let's see if we can't emulate that look. Hmm. Yeah, Ermin, you're right. It's it's thin. My ceiling is thin. It needs to be thicker. Definitely. I think it was like a 10 centimeters. Steve Began was telling me yesterday. I was like, Steve, why does this happen? He was like, dude, you got to have your geometry be 10 meters, 10 centimeters thick or else lumen is going to light leak through the dang thing. So keep that in mind, y'all. Um, Let's get this light looking good and then we're going to add some graffiti. All right, directional light and the rec light. So a lot of this, dang, that just looks freaking sweet. You can do so many different types of lighting here, guys. Uh, but that directional light, we can crank it. Okay, we can take it to like an intensity of 30. And look at that, just so much bounce light in our scene. Really looks nice. Um, the only reason I'm really using a rectangle light is to get that, um, that cone shape up here. Now, again, it is very, very harsh here. So we need to soften that up by, well, we can do it a couple different ways. We can make the light larger, but we found that that gave us that light leak situation. So we could pull it up. And move it a little bit you know something something like that is not half bad oh, what the heck is going on another thing I want to do is uh actually look out to white just like the reference it goes straight to white so I'm going to take this wall, let's duplicate it, move it up, move it on up, get it right to the edge there. We'll scale it down because we still want light to come through. We don't want to block any light, but we just want enough. So. We are looking at white as opposed to black and white. We want it to, we want to fake the sky. Um, so we just got to grab a white solid. Yeah, there you go. Boom. That looks great. All right, let's keep messing with our rec light. I like that shadow on the actual ladder. I think that looks really cool. So we can maybe like move it this way. Something like that. It's pretty darn good. And then we can see about rotation. Turn on snapping or turn off snapping rather. And we can take our sun directional light. We can crank it to like 50, so it's really bright. But then we take our source angle. If I turn off the rec light, 
we take the source angle and we take it up to 10, take it up to 20, take it up to 30. All right, it's gonna, wow, it's gonna screw up everything. So here's what I'll do. Let's try one of these little blockers, a flag, and we'll duplicate it under the floor here. And we'll see if this helps us. Nope. It probably has something to do with like Hmm. Don't know why it's leaking like that. I mean, we're probably just going too hard on the on the sunlight. We're just breaking it. So we, we need to dial it back. Um, let's grab our sunlight. Directional light. And the source angle. Bam, all right, we reset it. And let's grab our rect light. And let's do let's do this in a couple different lights. I'm still trying to get rid of that like that spot on the ground there. Oh, I know what we can do. Attenuation radius. That is how we'll do it. So the light just goes right. So attenuation radius on the rect light. If we pull that back, remember earlier we maxed it out, right? So we just get it so ah, perfect, right? Perfect. It's beautiful. Bam. Let's give this camera another shot too, yeah? All right, that looks nice. I'll make another rec light. Um, Inside, right? So I'm gonna drag another rect light out. Bing, spacebar. Let's turn on our angle snaps. Get that to 90, and center it up. G will allow us to see our different icons and stuff. I'm gonna bring it up, up, up. Come on now. Come on, boy. Let's bring this up, up, up. Cool, and let's control the uh, the barn doors, right? So this is something that you see on movie sets where you can control the barn doors so it blocks the light from hitting certain spots, which is exactly what we wanna do. So we open up those barn doors, we wanna focus it down, and we wanna extend the barn doors so we're shooting like a, like a spotlight almost. Bam, right there. And then we'll just bring the intensity down. So that's that's off. And that, boom, is pretty darn perfect. So we're cheating it, right? We're cheating that look. But that's what you gotta do. You gotta cheat it and it looks great. I'm gonna bring some of this stuff into our geometry. This goes into our lighting. So now we're all clean and it's looking darn good. Yes, 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 yes. So we cheated it, right? We got our uh, three lights. We're doing this with three lights. We have our sunlight, boom shining straight down 
onto this little area here. We have our first rectangular light, which is up above, way up in the sky. Oh no, it's literally right there. Boom, just on the outside of that entrance. And that is blasting this wall, giving you that nice cone shape. We're cranking the attenuation radius, so it's not hitting the floor. And then we're using a third one, right? To get us that nice soft light look. And we might be able to take the directional light or sun bring the intensity down we can do the same for the second rect light bring the intensity down something like that i think that can look pretty sweet directional light we can still take down and maybe nah nah i like that that looks nice let's take our uh in the directional light the volumetric scattering intensity if we take that up we're going to get a nice little beam of light but i think honestly that takes away from the whole thing because that's really what we want um if we take our exponential height fog and we give it a little bit more goodness gracious 0.01 0.02, it doesn't need a lot, 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0.025 perhaps. Mm-hmm. All right, you have a little bit there, which is kind of sweet. We can take the directional light and soften that up. So remember when we went too hard with it, it did this whole weirdness thing here. Let's crank it until we, let's bring it back down until it's not there anymore because that'll spread out, should spread out that volumetric. Maybe, maybe it doesn't actually. Maybe, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. Heck yeah, guys, we've been, we got 745 people up in the live stream right now. That is awesome. Thank you guys. And we're growing too, that's great. Yo, I am almost, almost at a million subscribers. If you ain't subscribed already, now is the time. If you're learning something, if you're getting a little education on, if you're having fun, we're close to a million, y'all. Started this channel in 2006. Freaking. Almost, what is that, 2006? Six, six, like a, 16 years or something? All right. So. Let's add some graffiti, shall we? Let's add some graffiti. All right, so the way I'm doing that is with, they are called decals, all right? And again, we're going top left, Quixel Bridge. We're gonna navigate to decals, specifically graffiti. And I just pulled a number of little graffiti bits. Um, stuff that looked a little bit more natural as opposed to I don't know. It's tough with the graffiti. Cause it can very quickly feel like it's they're just assets. Especially based on what they say. I'd rather not you not know what they say. And the little bit that I know about graffiti. Um apparently you'll have taggers go, they'll make a tag, right? And then you might have some artists who come and remix it, or you have someone who tags over it. Um, very similar to Tony Hawk, <laughs> pro skater, where you know you're tagging different uh, different ramps, and then someone comes and tags over your ramp. So you're gonna see a lot of graffiti on top of graffiti um, here. Some of it is more artistic than the other than others. So what I try to do is like uh, for this art. I will have a bigger piece like this that had a little bit more thought put into it, like you see on the right and the left here. 
and even back behind here, right? You can tell that there a little that some work was put into that. And then you have like the lazier ones that come on top and just like trash the ones that that are looking good. And then you'll probably have someone come and do something over top all of that, right? So it just keeps stacking. Also, another thing to note for this scene specifically is that people are coming down this ladder, right? Most people are right-handed. So they're probably hitting this with their right hand. You're gonna have more graffiti on the right side than on the left. Um, and it's from the top coming all the way down to the bottom, there's graffiti, right? And you consider how tall someone is too. The graffiti's not gonna be up in this random spot. It's gonna be in the accessible spots, right? So let's lay some graffiti, shall we? Okay, okay. I'm gonna move the content browser again up on out of here so that we have a little nicer view. And I may, I'm even gonna get rid of the place actors window so we can just have a better view of what's going on here. All right, let's start with one of the bigger pieces. We'll drag this out. And by default, you can see it's like sticking to surfaces. But the orientation is not correct. I think it's actually oriented down like this. So we need to rotate it. And I'll make sure snapping is on. 90 degrees, I think it's upside down. We'll go 180. Right, and it's a volume the way it works. It's really cool. So if we hit G, you can kind of see what's going on. Right, there's this box here and it's taking up a, a space. And we're gonna move it, if you move it forward and back, Right, it'll be on the wall. If it's like too scrunched for you, if I can get this right, if it's too flat, you're not, you're gonna have a hard time getting it on the wall. So you wanna make sure that it is indeed a volume. It's a cube, right? So that we can get it up on this wall. I think it's a little big. And it's cool, it like maintains the the normal data from the layer underneath. It's pretty sweet. So there's one of our main pieces. Let's grab another one. Boom. And we should be placing some graffiti, y'all. Bam. Let's get some more larger ones. Sweet. And this just, you know, this just takes time. Time and patience. I spent a while getting all this art and these decals up on this wall. 
and we'll go one more. Sure, let's try this one. And of course you can, you know, change the colors of these by clicking on the texture, changing the hue or the material instance and changing the tint perhaps. Again, I'm hitting G so I can actually see what's going on. Control back tick. Back tick is the button next to your one key on the keyboard. That's going to switch between local and world, world orientation. For some reason, when I scale it down, it also doesn't scale it uniformly, which is annoying. I feel like huh, there's got to be a way to do that. Cool, so we kind of have like our four main ones here. Um, and from here, what we'll do is we'll just kind of like go over top um, and really mess it up with some smaller bits of graffiti. Bam, yeah, like this, over and over and over again. Oh, I like this one. This is a good one. And this is something that y'all can, you can take days on this thing. You know, like I said, I, I worked yesterday on this, building out this whole scene. Um, I could easily spend a week, you know? What the heck? There we go. That's still, I don't know why it's not scaling uniformly. And this is just one of those things that you can't do a halfway job on the graffiti. It has to be like, it only works if there's a lot of it. So, you know, you just, just be aware of what you're getting into, but that's what it, that's what it takes. You know, as artists, that's what it takes.
takes patience, time and effort to really get the details right. Spend most of your time on the details, right? And I talked about that in my last video. We talked about, um, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be spending most of your time on the details anyway. So you might as well get to the point where set yourself up to uh, get to the point where you can work on the details as fast as possible. So you'll spend 20% of your time getting to the 80% mark, and then you'll spend 80% of your time on the last 20% of your render, essentially, right? Because the details, that's what that's what counts. I'm just going down the list. I think um, I'm more than halfway through here on these different tags. So I'll get to the end and we'll call it. We don't have to go all out. We only have so much time. And you could easily do custom um, tags here too, you know? If you wanna do uh, decals on top of decals and you want the order to be different, if you select the decal and if you type sort order, you can change this and it'll move up in the queue in the layer stack and that's that's exactly what we want so beautiful and quixel has a ton of different decals too they're not just graffiti they um they have leaks and potholes and literally anything you can think of they got it I'll, I'll put some like water leaks on and show you guys once we're through with this graffiti list A, B, K, what is up? A, thanks for the super chat. Lighting is everything, agreed. William Fauché showing awesome UE5 lighting guide. That is, yep, I learned so much from that. He is the man, the master. Definitely check out William Fauché if you guys, uh, if you guys got a chance. Yeah, he's the one. I learned so much from his lighting guide. But it's true, lighting is so much of it. Sweet. looking pretty darn good Ooh, we can get some tags on the pillars too
Now, as far as animation goes, that was like the thing I basically ran out of time to do yesterday. So I did uh, some rain. I started messing with some, some rain and some drip drops coming from the top here. And I can add that real quick at the end and show you guys. It is a paid plugin. It's called Ultra Dynamic Sky, I think is the name of it. And it was the first time I used it yesterday. It was really cool though. And I can't wait to get more into it. Um, but it is uh, quite a powerful advanced plugin and really easy to get some cool stuff with. So I'll show you guys that right at the end. Now here's some leakage, some grungy leakage. Right, you can kind of see, get the idea. Now it is obviously baked into my concrete texture here. So we don't really need it too much, but it is there to give you guys kind of an idea of what that looks like with and without. Um, let's see. Old book. Why do I have an old book? Huh. That's actually kind of cool. Like a poster or something. But I don't know. It is a little random. That is a little random. I may just put this thing. On the ground over here, maybe? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Um, I think we're looking pretty good graffiti wise. I mean, maybe we can get a couple more up the wall. We can maybe duplicate one of these guys that Maybe like this one. We're not really seeing this one too much. That's not half bad. I mean, that gets the idea across. Um, path tracing, sure. Pretty nuts. So this is like the unbiased renderer inside of Unreal Engine, which you can access all of its settings in the post process. So if we type path trace, we can up the max bounces, the samples, all of this stuff, we can get into the, the denoiser. We can try like 500 
samples and then the denoiser should kick in at some point. Yeah, <laughs> pretty nuts. That looks really good. Wow. I think it like it doesn't account for fog actually. Unfortunately, it doesn't account for fog. But isn't that crazy? This looks like uh, some AI art, just with the denoiser, you know? Yeah, it's awesome how quick Unreal is. Pretty sweet. But we are going to be in this mode, lit mode. All right, what else, y'all? What else? We have a couple more things that we can do before we render this thing. And I'll get, I'll talk you through render settings and whatnot. Um, hmm, the seam up here is looking a little basic. Uh, let me at least try. Moving this to a point where there is some sort of seam. Yeah, it's a little bit better. We can make the ceiling a little darker as well. Um, so we can click the asset, hit control B. It's gonna navigate to it in your, in your uh, content browser, which I have on the other screen here. So this is our roof. Um, and the roof has, get rid of that, there we go. Uh, in the details panel, you can navigate within this little folder with the magnifying glass to the material. And if we open up the material instance, right, we can adjust the brightness, to like 0.5 or something. That way the focus is just a little bit more on our scene than the ceiling, it's a little bright. Awesome. Um, let's mess with, let's actually get rid of these streaks. I'm gonna blow these out. So let's go to our rectangular light. I'm gonna hold Alt to duplicate it. Control back tick. Yep, to get us to, there you go. And I'll adjust the attenuation radius. So it's just focused on just right up in there. I'll get as close as I can. Hmm, attenuation radius. Just enough so it blows that out. So we're not really seeing those streaks. And we can crank the color correction as well to kind of hide that. Um, what else? That's just because my normals are bad. Um, let's go to the post-process volume. And hit saturation. We can get a little bit of that global saturation. Yeah, that's nice. Let's, I want it to be a little bit more green so we can go to our color correction or our color grading rather, go global, gamma, and just a little bit more like that. That feels, that feels nice to me. In our camera, let's adjust our depth of field. So currently our aperture is 2.8. We can set it to like 1.2 to really blur out the foreground. And then we can tell it to always track something. So focus method, we set the track and we'll choose what to track. So probably just the, probably the ladder. So we can eye drop the ladder. That way the ladder's always in focus, no matter where we move. 
And there was a really cool um, like camera distortion. I actually, you know what? Do you does anyone know how to do camera distortion in Unreal? I, I followed the tutorial yesterday. I built out like a, a post process material. It, it worked, but it wouldn't render my scene in movie queue. So I don't know if you guys know of a method. Um, what else can we do? Oh, we can add a little bit of greenery to this. So let me switch to foliage mode and let's bring up our content browser. We'll dock it. Boom. And let's go to Grasswald. Let's get their volume two, or no, the forest pack. And let's pull one of these leaves. Which one, which one do we want? Glycoma, yes, that's what we want. This leaf. Leaf's got some crazy names. All right, we'll drag it in. We'll make sure we navigate to it. Camera's down again, let me reset. For y'all. Boom, boom. All right, we got some leaves up in here. That's nice. I like that. Um, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Cool. We got a patch of greenery here. We can up the density as well. And we can kind of scatter some stuff along the water. Just for a little bit more detail. Also, I want to try one thing. So there's a material in Quixel Bridge that is like a really cool wet swamp. I think it is... Mossy Swamp Ground, no. Swamp Water. Yeah, these two, these two. I wanna try these real quick. Cause maybe it can give us a cool look. Um, so we'll download these. Now that's a slow download. I chose I chose highest quality. That's that's why you don't do that. Ooh. Hmm. Do I recommend remaking uh, photographs? I guess is what you're trying to say. Is it good practice? Yes. And I love remaking my own photographs. That way I can say this is my art. <laughs> that's the best part. It's a cheat. You go out, you take some photography, you recreate it in Unreal, post it up, um, and it's yours. It's not some other person's photo and then, you know. Yeah, it's it's actually really nice. So let's do, ba, ba, ba. let's try, um, where are you at? I'm starting to lose my mind here. because so we're towards the end of the stream. How long we have we gone for? Two hours, two and a half hours? Not bad. Um, materials, no, mega scans, surfaces, swamp water. Let's apply it to this floor and see what that looks like. Heck yeah. It's too big, so I'll double click it, tiling and offset. Let's uh, tile it like three times looks great
Wow. That's super cool. And we can tile it every which way we want to get the most detail. That's wonderful. So that's an option, okay? I think that's way better <laughs> than what we had before. Heck yeah, that looks so good. And then we have this other swamp water, which I think is just not as green, but I love. Oh, that looks awesome. Let's try it though. Boom. Yeah, not as cool, but it's, you know, it works. It certainly works. I kind of like the other one better though, but I had three. <gasps> Mossy Swamp Ground. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, that's nice. Let's tile it three times. Mm. That's the good stuff. That. Mm. That's, ooh, I like that a lot. That looks freaking awesome. Heck yeah. I think that's about it. I'm going to take my sun directional light and let's give it a little bit more of a source angle, like five. Oh man, but we get that chunk. I don't know why it's doing that. I mean, what if we just took the sun out? And we crank, no, we need the sun. We need a little bit of the sun. Take it to like 10 or something, five. And then we take the, the skylight and we boost the intensity of the skylight to like three. That'll give us more of an ambient kind of thing here. And we take the directional light again, and maybe now with the directional light at a more chill. Yes! It pretty much works. Heck yeah. And then we can take our, let's see, there's still a little bit of chunkage on the left there, some artifacting, but that's when we could bring our post-process volume up the vignette, just a little bit more to kind of mask it a touch. Mm -hmm. And I think when we render this, it'll actually it, it, hopefully will probably look a little bit better let's go to that directional light again let's take that softness down to 10 a little bit better okay we can take our rect light too and bring it up a little bit more and have it maybe be like a hundred by a hundred mm-hmm and increase the intensity. Nah, one looks better. Directional light intensity. That's not bad. We can take our skylight, bring up the general lift of the scene. Mm-hmm. That is not too shabby. 
Sweet. Now there is this nonsense up here going on. I wonder if I can really scoot these flags in as much as possible to help with that. Tough one. It is a tough one indeed. The vignette might be a little intense. And I just want to test out this other swamp water one more time. Yeah, that's I think that's better though, because it's just we're getting more reflections. We were at uh, this before, but I really think this is better. And we can even crank, let's see, the base specular, we can crank it to one. So it's a little bit brighter roughness. I mean, zero? Point two? Yeah, that's not bad at all. Sweet. I think we're good to render this thing. So, let us, oh, I need to expand this. Oh, these, these are a little intense. Cause I can see them, you're not supposed to see them. Heck yeah. All right, so to render this out, oh, rain. Okay, we talked about rain. This is the first time, well, technically I use my concrete materials. Those are a little bit, but uh, this is called Ultra Dynamic Sky. It is a paid plugin on the, uh, the marketplace. You can get to it by going here, going to marketplace. This is the Epic Games Launcher. We can look for Ultra ultra dynamic sky i think it's like 60 bucks uh why it doesn't not say the price but it's super cool and i was just discovering it yesterday so here is what you can do in two seconds so what you're gonna do is first off organize my scene decals and geometry awesome so i think ultra dynamic sky let's get rid of all of our light except our rectangular lights and let's drag in under blueprints we can drag in the ultra dynamic sky boom it should do its thing And what does it look like? Looking like this right now, but we can like control everything from it. We control fog, cloud coverage, right? Like you can get some really cool looks here with this thing. Um, overall intensity, what if we set that to like three? I don't know if that does anything. 
Is there like a brightness or something? Anyway, what I'm doing with this is using the dynamic weather. So if I drag, drag, yeah, drag this in, you can see that we have rain. Now, technically it shouldn't be raining inside, but we can have little drippy drops coming from the ceiling, right? Because it is wet in here. This is a well. So that's a good way to animate your scene. You can animate it in a number of other ways. Camera wise, you can add rain like this. Um, we can go to the weather system and we can take uh, under rain. You know, if we have more rain, we can have less rain. Really coming down. Um, and we want it to be doing its little drip drops inside here so it's going on the roof if I take this roof and I say be gone it should drip drop into our scene and have some little splashes but this is perfect because it's all coming from the opening which is kind of what I want anyway and if I take that weather and I crank it up to like 50,000 we can actually have it raining from that little opening up there, which is awesome. But we need ambient light, so there's probably a million ways to do this. I'm just gonna grab a rectangle light. Let's grab one of the ones already in our scene can do this one control drag duplicate flip it upside down so it's pointing at the ceiling you can bring it right into the middle of our scene bring it up here and if we make it pretty darn large Depending on the angle you're at, you can uh, bounce some light off the ceiling. This is probably not the best way to do this, to be honest. Yeah, this is this is probably not the way to go. If I flip it, bring it up. And turn it off, turn it back on. We just need a little bit to lift our scene. And that's already too much. So that's off. 0.1 is still too much. 0.05 maybe. 0.02. Just a little bit. So that's with the ultra dy dynamic sky. There's probably a way to like lift the um the ambient light in the scene because we don't we can't really use our directional light but for the sake of rendering this thing out i'm going to turn off the sky and we're going to bring back our original light setup so let's talk about render settings What you want to do for the best render settings, we will go to settings, we will go to plugins, and you guys go to enable movie render queue. Bam, the movie render queue. You'll restart your engine, and what we'll want to do is set up a sequence so that Unreal knows 
there are uh, frames to be exported. All right, so I made a sequences folder. This is my level sequence, but you can make one by right clicking, go to animation, level sequence. You'll create a level sequence. And I'll create one of these for you. And, oh, actually, this is where I want my content browser to be. There we go. So in your sequencer, you can essentially choose your frame rate. So 30 FPS is good. If you want to do it for film, more of that filmic look, 24 is the way to go. And you will drag your camera. I'm just going to make a new one. Level sequence. We're going to drag our camera in here. Boom. And from here, you can animate the camera. Um, you can tell me how, tell how many frames you want it to, to be. Um, so we can take this out to like 500 or something. Stretch this out. You got all your frames here. You can do a sweet camera move by uh, working the transform location. So we can do a sweet dolly. Um, we could do a dolly back. Could be awesome. All right, so you would just essentially come up here. You would make a keyframe, go to another point in time, come back, make a keyframe. And when you hit play, bam, you have a nice little animation. And from that point, you can animate your lights too, et cetera, et cetera. Basically anything with a little key, keyframeable option you can animate. And we will go to this little clapboard. And the ellipsis next to it will allow you to choose movie render queue. And until you enable that plugin, you can't do it. In here, all right, we'll go to our settings, boom. And I have these preloaded console variables. They're pinned in a comment on the uh, forest door render that I did two weeks ago. And basically I'll export a EXR sequence, DWAA compression, um, anti-aliasing. This one probably doesn't need it, depends on what you're doing. If you have motion blur or plants that are blowing in the wind, you can add anti-aliasing and it really helps smooth it out. But remember, it's gonna render 64 versions of one frame for every frame. So you're multiplying your render time by 64, essentially. Uh, you can probably get away with like 12 or something, but for this, we don't really need it because it's, it just depends on what you're doing. If there's movement, if there's motion blur, etc. Anti-aliasing helps smooth those things out. Console variables, this stuff is uh, what's pinned in the comment of my last video. And screen percentage is a great one. That will double the size of my output, which I currently have set to 4K it will render an 8K image and scale it down to fit in that 4K uh, resolution. So it's a good way to pack more detail into uh, your original file, um, your, your resolution rather. And finally, yeah, you can override uh, your frame rate for 24 FPS if you want. You can, choose, by default, it'll render the amount of frames you preset in your sequencer, or you can use a custom playback range and only do like up to frame 10, whatever. And it will render your scene. So, you know, with a little bit more time and tweaking, you spend a couple days on this. So this is what we just made today. Um, let's see what we can do here. Uh, compare this to what I made yesterday. Right, so very, very similar, very, like darn similar. Um, and that's probably with just a couple more hours of work. And with an After Effects pass where I made a little, had a little bit of lens distortion, right? But it is not far off from what we just made here today. So that, uh, that was freaking great. I I will take any time here. Let's turn this camera on and see if this thing works. Oh boy. Woo! Oh, we done on did it. Alright, we're back. 
So that was, that was a, how long did it take? Like three hours? But we did it though. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. I know I sure did. I freaking love doing these scenes. They are the best. Um, if you guys have any questions, I am happy to answer any questions y'all have here. And we're gonna do the weekly challenge winner review here, maybe after a little bit of Q&A. But I need water um, while you guys ask some questions. So let me have it. Do a little at Punisher for me so I can see that y'all are asking questions, yeah? Wondrous, good question. What would your advice be to someone who just had a 3D video go viral? My video got 19 million views in a month and I don't know how to handle it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a thing. So I remember when I made Cardboard Warfare, I was, I think I was just out of high school and into college and I was playing Magic the Gathering at a card shop and Cardboard Warfare, it got picked up on um, G4, Attack of the Show. And it, you know, they did a whole segment on it. It was like number one. And it got a million views after that. It, like, I couldn't focus on Magic the Gathering anymore. It blew my mind. And that, that moment, for me at least, I was like, wow, I can do this as a living now. Um, I can see how people enjoy what I, what I love making. So why don't I just keep making the stuff I enjoy? That was the moment for me where I was like, this can be a thing. Um, so that's the positive version of it. The more stressful, anxious version of it is like, um, you know, you put out your first video and it goes viral and you get a bunch of views and you have this feeling to keep it up. And you have this feeling to, um, you know, keep putting out content of that caliber so that you can get back to that feeling of putting out a viral video. It feels stressful because it's like, oh crap, now I have to post so much. Now I have to do so much. I would say, let it be an inspiration to you and a, a sign to you that you're making good stuff. If you had fun making that viral video, um, keep having fun doing what you love. Not everyone will be viral. I promise that. Um, it is a luck thing, but it's also a preparedness thing. If you are prepared and you're staying well oiled and you are doing your 3D art and you're loving it and you're posting it and you're showing it, one of them will catch on like they did. Um, I'd say my other thing too is like, have a place, if you can, have a home base where if it goes viral, it goes viral from your home base. Um, Cause when we did Boss Town Dynamics at Corridor, we posted the first one, it got reposted all over the internet, it got ripped a million times, and it probably wouldn't have done as well as if, if it did not get ripped like that. But I think at the time, Corridor, they either like didn't have a Facebook, an official Facebook post, or they didn't have an official like Twitter post or something. Cause like it got like 34 million views from some Twitter post and some other Facebook post got like 19 million as well. And in the best case scenario, it's your original video that's being shared like that, as opposed to a reshare. Um, so that would be another piece of advice is like, make sure that you have a house for your 3D art, your content, your videos, your whatever to blast out from. Um, so yeah, you just don't want people ripping off your, your video, posting it on their Facebook and getting a million views from it. You can't really do anything about that. So that is very stressful. Yeah, that's very stressful. Um, Hopefully they're giving credit. At least they're giving credit and pointing to, to the original. That's what you want. Um, L, how would you go about adding the dripping effect? Uh, we did the dripping effect with the ultra dynamic sky and the weather system. 
Sky, what's up? Hey, do you, uh, are you interested in making stylized scenes in UE for the next live stream? I would love to, I just don't know how to. Um, but I love that, like, Breath of the Wild style. Uh, big fan of that. Have you ever tried EXR workflow with Movie Render Queue? Yeah, all the time. I always do EXR. EXR is out of Movie Render Queue. Bring it into DaVinci, bring it into After Effects, depending. Um... What else do we got? Mitch Mitch, hey man, what's up? Final result looks great. Any performance tips for running UE on lower end machines? Yes, so I believe Nanite, you know, if, if you're taking stuff uh, from Quixel, you can export it as Nanite. If you're importing your own stuff, make sure you check the Nanite, build Nanite mesh box. That's gonna make things a lot faster and easier for you. Um, what else? Uh, Optimization. I'm not the biggest, like, I don't have the most tips on optimization. What what else? Um, okay. Yeah, here's the thing. On the top left, you should see, like, a scalability option. And it's mine set to cinematic. You can set it down. You can, like, lower the scalability. Um, let me just show you really quick. So... Right here on the left, we have it's set to cinematic. It's the highest. It's maxed out. You can set it to epic. It'll, you know, looks pretty darn similar. And, but now you notice it's gone, right? So if you go to settings, engine scalability settings, that's where it's at, okay? Um, you can take it down to low if you want. I had to do this when I was painting foliage, uh, LOD zero foliage on my last scene. And guaranteed, you're going to be navigating just fine this way. You can drop the exposure. Right? And then when you go to render, you switch over to cinematic. Right? So that's probably the biggest thing. Also, you don't need 8K textures. Right? Bring in the lower res textures. You can switch them out later if need be. What else? What else? Who do we got? Um, I'm just going down the ones where that you've you've added me here. Next sib. Um, you've been trying out Mixer to create variation with Quixel assets. I I have not tried it out yet, but I need to. Certainly. Ah, oh, Ahmad, how do I get my idea? It's based off of a photo I took in this water well thing in Newfoundland. I climbed down into it because I'm just like that. I love me some uh, urban exploration. So naturally I find myself at the bottom of a sewer uh, and taking shots, you know? Not alcoholic shots. <laughs> photography, y'all. Um, and then I use that, I use my own photography as my reference to create 3D scenes with. Jason, have you been using 3D scans more? Um, Yes, actually. So in two weeks from now, my God, is it really two weeks from now? I hadn't even, whew, I gotta kick it up a notch because I'm putting out a video that I hadn't started yet, <laughs> but I'm putting out a video on how to do massive scale scans with a drone, how to capture mountains and stuff. So I'm gonna be piecing that together. That's coming out in, I believe in two weeks. Look out for it, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I love me some 3D scans. Bring those in as nanite meshes and your stuff is looking good. Um, can I do a tutorial on Niagara fluids? I don't know how to do that. So well, maybe when I figure it out, absolutely. How do I find lost places like this, abandoned places? I look them up online. I think there's a place called urbex.com. It's like urban exploration and it's always out of date. It's very old, but you can find stuff that way. But I'll always look for abandoned places if I'm if I'm visiting a place or I'll pull off on the side of the road and just explore. Um Will Z Myth. Will Smith. When is the next big challenge? It is sooner than y'all think. So another reason, if you are not subscribed and you want to participate in one of these awesome 3D challenges, hit that subscribe button. Hit that dang bell. You guys know how this works. Cause in a very short amount of time. We're going to be getting together for the next 3D community challenge. I'm recording the mocap 
on Monday with a very, very cool person. So, uh, yeah, get excited. It's going to be sweet. What else? Um, yeah, that's about, that's about it. About it. All right, y'all. I'm going to do a little uh, weekly challenge breakdown here, and I'll come back if you guys got any more questions. But we're going to talk about the weekly challenge. The theme this week was Wild West. So let's switch on over and do some art review, shall we? Community art review. All right. Let me full screen this Discord view here. Okay. So, like I said, we are talking about the weekly challenge. Wild West was the theme. We got five winners to get into, each of which will get 15 points to their rank on the server, which is a nice little emblem um, connected to your name on the Discord server. The link is below if you guys want to join the Discord server. This is all free. The weekly challenge is free. Um, I do have a Patreon. That's also in the description. And um, you just get access to the Pro Lounge where we'll do game nights sometimes um, and hang out together. You guys can vote on the weekly challenge as well and determine what the weekly challenge is. So it's a cool way to get involved a little bit. Um, but let's hop into these winners. First and foremost, we have John Malcolm with this beautiful render right here. Um, absolutely fantastic. The lighting is fantastic. You modeled this pistol yourself. That is the most impressive thing. If it was an asset, ooh, maybe had to have been an honorable mention, but the fact that you modeled all of this, you you um, sculpted those glasses too. I love that you actually used um, AI art, I think it was Mid Journey, to create the design on the cards. And then you took that and I, I don't know if you took it further or if it literally were looking at AI art, you probably cleaned it up, but I think it's a great way to use it. It's a small thing. It's not the entire thing, but you're incorporating it, incorporating that in a really cool way. Um, but congratulations to you, John Malcolm. This is a great piece. Very well lit, very well uh, modeled and presented. Very good stuff, man. Next up, who do we got? Boom! That is oh, we got to volume down. <laughs> that is blown out. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. All good. All good. Soto Monte apologizes for the ears. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's watch that again. It's super cool. This is all Unreal Engine. This is the sci-fi. Sci-fi West. I love it. So good. Perfect camera shake. Beautiful explosion, really nice fire you got going, great detail, you got the cape moving. This is friggin' awesome. Metatrox, congratulations for winning this week's weekly challenge. 15 points to you. And you get that pro tier access too. You get that lounge for a week. Good times. Who is next? Bam! Obliviart. Frickin' awesome. So, so good. I love this lighting. It's creepy as all. Um... The composition is cool. This is also Unreal Engine. Yeah, man, you're killing it. The, my one note for you is to take the uh, the arm of that creature and get it up onto the building. Because it looks like this creature just has one arm. And you want to give it a bit more clarity. So I'd have that arm up with this hooks around the side of the steeple of that thing. Like, that would be so cool. Otherwise, he just looks like a one-armed creature. Um... But man, you crushed it with your lighting and your design and you modeled that thing from scratch. So congratulations for winning this week's challenge. Who's next? We got Sky. Yes. So this is a recreation. Um, you recreated another artist's work, which we cannot show on the stream um, because I think the original is a little bit more revealing. <laughs> um, but you did a fantastic job with this scene here. Um, it's a perfect recreation. It's very beautiful. It's very well lit. It's very well modeled, colored, everything. You did a really solid job and you gave the character a little bit more of a cartoony look to them, which I really dig. So congratulations, Sky. You're doing great stuff. 
And finally, the last winner. We're gonna get into the honorable mentions, all right? But the last winner is Visual, our very own Visual. Yes, killing it with these dad's characters, man. Doing great work. I love this. So much detail. Your lighting's perfect. Your composition is fantastic. It's a beautiful scene. I love them glasses, dude. I gotta give me some of them glasses. Ha <laughs> ha! Heck yeah. So congratulations to all the winners. And since one of our moderators won, they already have access to all the stuff on the server. They're mods. Um, so they, they will give their um, challenge winner roll out to one of these honorable mentions that we're going to get into. Um, so I feel it's a little bit more fair that way. Um, and the honorable mentions each get five points to their roll. So y'all keep ranking up. All right. We got a bunch of cool tiers on the Discord server. So first up, honorable mention, we got 3D Gala popping off. I thought this was a fantastic idea. I don't know if this was a reference from somewhere, but it's freaking cool. Um, it's just a good idea. Obviously, it's violent. Yes, it's violent, but it's a fantastic idea. I would love a little bit more light. It's hard to tell kind of what is going on. I had to take a second look at it, um, especially on the right side of frame. Uh, I think a top-down, like Tarantino-style top-down light blasting onto that table. Maybe maybe the way to go? I mean, it's not bad. Certainly, it's not bad. And your render quality is, is fantastic, so good stuff. Uh, next up, honorable mention, we have Danel. Danel? Um, yeah, beautifully lit. I love the angle. Tells the story of what's going on. It's going to be a little... Uh, we got some cowboys coming in here to rough up whoever is in this saloon here. And you got a little hero character in the middle. I love that. Your lighting is solid. That was my biggest takeaway from this thing. Um, and I really dig the angle too. Next up is Phoebe? Phoebe? I don't know. Um, this one's great. This one came close to winning. Uh, I think your lighting is, is the best part. And actually, your composition is not half bad either. I would love to see a little bit more backlight on that cross to tell what it is. If I squint, I should be able to see what's going on. Um, but your your lighting is really, really nice. I do love the sky and the ground that you have going on there. Um, Note-wise, I would give a bit more clarity to the character. It's hard to see what's going on. It looks like they ha are playing the violin, maybe? Um... I would love to see more of an arm, more of a hand holding a pistol. The left hand, you know, it's a little difficult to tell silhouette wise. I know that she has like a jacket on that's kind of, you know, doing a thing, but it just, it muddies up her silhouette to make it uh, a little bit hard to tell what's going on. Another thing too, as I give the ground a little bit more uh, detail, smaller rocks, smaller shrubs, I can tell you scattered the one plant you needed a lot more. Um, that would be my only note. Yeah, th th those are... Anyway, it's good stuff. It's it's awesome stuff. Um, we have Ha 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 <laughs> next up. I love this idea. It's a samurai cowboy. I mean, like, what else do I need to say? You framed it nicely. You lit it nicely. I think it's a great design. So, congrats. Lord Cabbage is next. This is a freaking cool scene. It's a little dark, but that's kind of the point. I like the way it's lit. I like the town. It totally reminds me of Elden Ring. There's like an area that you go into in a valley and it has all these like spirits that are just blasting you with freaking spirit, spirit blasts the whole time. Um, it totally reminds me of that, but I love it. It's dark and moody. Pretty sweet environment. Next up we have Ryujin yeah I love this like I you know I've seen these before Blender Street has a lot of them on their Instagram um, I I just like that it's actually sitting in an environment um, and I've never really seen a saloon or sh I guess this is more of a sheriff's office office and jail as it says by the sign I hadn't really seen that Usually you see people's offices or like bedrooms done in that style. So I thought this was pretty sweet. Keep it up. Good stuff. The Game Factory is next. Dude, you knocked it out 
with your decision here. You said this was originally an animation, but since you ran out of time, you turned it into this little comic strip. And I think that's perfect, man. That's such a good idea. Instead of, you know, rushing something out that wasn't complete, you took what you had and you made it complete. I love it. I think it's very, very smart to change halfway through or three quarters of the way through and do what you did. So I think that's awesome. I think your scene's cool. I think it's well, well lit. It'd be nice to see a little bit more silhouette on that gun. I want to see the shape of that gun a little bit more. I think it's also a little small, I think. Uh, and then the one on the right, I feel like an edge light on the character in the foreground could help you bring that out as well as an edge light on the character being shot. It's hard to tell kind of what's going on, but you know, I think it's awesome. So keep it up. Next up, um, we have Tinum. This one came very close to winning as well. I really like the lighting. I dig the character that you made. I think it's awesome. This is another one that I think could benefit from a little bit more of like a, a right arm coming out just a little bit to catch that silhouette. Cause you kind of lose the arm uh, on this character's leg here. But I mean, other than that, like this is freaking solid. Like I said, you came really, really, really close to winning. So please keep it up. Weekend is next. This is just well lit, well composed. Like what else can you say? The darkest point of the, the darkest and brightest point of the image is your focal point, which is the character in the background. And you also have this character in the foreground who is bright against the dark saloons that really helps pop that character out. And it feels completely natural. It's beautiful, great lighting, really nice scene. Very, very simple. And finally, the last honorable mention is Zeus Creates. I thought this was uh, not too bad here. I thought the lighting was pretty good. I thought you did a good job of adding a bunch of characters in, giving them a different, uh, different action, different pose that felt right. And of course, the brightest and darkest point of the image is your focal point, the character coming into the saloon. And with that, y'all, we have successfully gotten through another weekly challenge, I think. We, I, I haven't lost count, but the count isn't quite accurate. We're almost at a hundred weekly challenges. That might be way off, but according to my, com yeah, 93. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That was a lot. I've been doing this for two years now, maybe a little over two years. We've been doing weekly challenges every single week and y'all been crushing it. So thank you so much. Uh, Alwyn, I see you. Thank you for that super chat. My, my chance of failure is absolute zero. I appreciate that every time, dude. Heck yeah. That's what's up. So y'all, that is, I mean, that's it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions y'all have. I'll hang out with you for another five or so. Maybe play a little bit of the native flute. half note Got, this this thing's freaking great i love this i got this from uh blue blue bear flutes i think it smells so good god mm. but you know i do a lot of rock climbing and constantly i find myself at the top of a mountain of just wind and quiet and I'm like why do I not have a flute to play at the top of a mountain so that is why I got this <laughs> I have yet to play it on the top of a mountain but I cannot wait any news on the community challenge it's coming soon y'all it is coming very very soon mega soon to render whatever is sacred to you or whatever image or whatever render communicates sacred 
nature. I, I don't know. Um, so you guys, you guys got a week? Y'all got a week? Alwyn, hey, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. I don't know how loud this is on the mic, but... But God, it's so much fun to play. Um, can I play some Zelda? I cannot play Zelda yet, but I think... Is this... Hold on, it's like a... Or something like that, right? I forget exactly what Zelda song it is, but... It's somewhere in there. I'm definitely, definitely gonna learn some of that. Because why not? Um, how do you learn Unreal like early on? I learned Unreal by forcing myself to do a project in Unreal. And um, originally I had Steve Began reach out to me. I did a stream with Steve. He was like, hey man, I hear you're trying to learn Unreal because I'm doing these streams, right? I'm like, I want to learn Unreal. I want to learn Unreal. You can watch my first stream in Unreal of me like failing and figuring some stuff out. It was, I think it was like a five hour stream, but Steve reached out. He's like, man, I'll, I'll help you out. And he met with me every Friday for like two or three hours and kind of answered any questions I had. Thank God for Steve. He, oh, that's why I call him my unreal sensei because he stepped up and he like answered every question I had for, for a few months, every Friday for a few hours. Um, from that point, I was able to like kind of get my bearings and you know, I, I figured out how materials work. I kind of figured out how lighting works. There's a million different lights in Unreal. It makes it confusing. It's easier now in Unreal 5 because everything's kind of automatic. But um, I just had to take on a project. And that's why I love these little environments is because I they're contained um, and they're doable. You know, it's not a whole... I can do it in a day. So it's super satisfying. Find a project for you, a small scale project that you can complete Um. And, and, and that you have to complete. It's a good way to do it. There's a video I made, it's uh, a music video. And it's one of my earlier Unreal Engine videos. It's a pre-edited video, it's not a live stream. And it's like everything I learned in Unreal Engine in the first like year and a half. And that is a video I made after I completed my first full project on Unreal, going over all the, all the things I learned that I would have loved to know when I first started. So that's a good one. Also, the one I made last two weeks. Two weeks ago, that's a good one too. Like the forest door scene. Um, what else? Anything else on the monthly? Y'all want that monthly 3D community challenge info. It's coming up, y'all. It is coming up very soon. So be ready. We pretty much have the prizes locked. We have the schedule locked. We have the template pretty much locked we just need to execute it um yeah i mean we're hoping that these are bigger and better every single time so just get excited steve began not steve bacon began it's gonna be steve began i believe yeah um do you think you'll cover the modeling or asset production in a new e5 randoom Thanks for making the stream. I saw this was your first one uh, that you could follow along with. Cover modeling or asset product. I, I don't really model in Unreal. I'll model in C4D, um, but I'm starting to get, not used to, I'm starting to get familiar with Unreal's modeling tools. Or asset production. Uh, what do you mean asset production? Like making my own photo scans? I got videos on that, if that's what you mean, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what I use for a project. If I create a piece of art, it depends on like the tools I use for that art. I'll talk about them. Yeah. Um, Papaxo, have I been drawing lately? I have not. I've mostly been the rock climbing, playing the flute, um, uh, making 3D art. Very busy, very, very busy. Yeah, I've been busy trying to build out the schedule for the weekly chat or the community challenge coming up um and trying to take time to myself but yeah it's been good what are my thoughts on otoy's version of nanite called meshlets in c40 meshlets that sounds funny i don't know anything about meshlets 
I knew that they were trying to do Brigade, which was their like real-time thing. Um, I don't know anything about Mesh Lips. I'll have to look it up. So that is good to know. I appreciate that. Uh, Funk Molly. My sincere thanks to you for sharing and teaching your knowledge for the future artists from all over the world. Please never stop what you're doing. Big love. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I do what I can. I enjoy creating stuff and I know it's difficult to create things. And I know a lot of people want to create things. So why not give a little insight into the process? But, you know, I can't promise I'll be doing it forever and ever. Who knows? I know I'm, I know I'm going to be making a movie pretty soon here. Um, and when I'm off making this movie, I will not be able to live stream. I will not be able to post pre-edited videos on VFX. But that doesn't mean I'm just going to not be here. So I'm trying to figure out what the plan would be. And I'll probably do some poll stuff and figure out like what you guys... Are looking for but the most like no-brainer thing for me is to like while i'm on set while i'm shooting have someone there who can shoot and also edit some like behind the scenes educational uh interview type stuff while the movie is being filmed um so that's the that's the like basic plan as of now but you know, we'll, we'll get there when the time comes. Hopefully sometime next year. What else, y'all? What else? How's the wife? Wife is good. She's out with her friends right now. Arthur, what's up? Hello from Brazil. I mean, that's about it, y'all. That is about it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. For checking out the art um it's been a good time it's been a very good time so uh two weeks from now look out for a aerial photogrammetry video i'm gonna be climbing to the top of a mountain with my buddy jan we're gonna post up early in the morning we're gonna get there at like 5 a.m and we're gonna set up set up base we're gonna send the drone out on these missions they're gonna I'm going to, you know, do a bunch of scans of mountains, large scale stuff, huge stuff, and come back to home base and walk you through the process of how to stitch it all together, use it in your art, right? So that's going to be uh, two weeks from now. So wish me luck. I, I voyage on, on Tuesday is when I, when I ship off and climb these these mountains it's gonna be sweet i'm bringing the flute of course i'm gonna bring the flute peter short is out scooty's out shoot no i have not seen it yet but thanks for the heads up that's awesome i think that's it everybody um soto do you want to cue up the, the music for this art i'll switch over to it and i'll just uh or is that the ending screen I believe it's the ending screen right anyway i'll see i'll see y'all i'll see y'all soon um good times good vibes always and uh keep creating see y'all peace <laughs>